Hi beautiful friends. Welcome to the Sunshine Farm. I'm Jen. Today I'm going to tell you guys about our plans for our homestead over the next year. It never rings in California the sun is always shining right. So I'm going to first point out a couple of things in the garden that we're going to be working on over the next year. We'll talk about this location I'm in right now, which is our like back patio. We'll talk about our plans for this area. And then we're gonna go in the house because we have a lot going on in there right now. Finally, I will show you guys the Airstream and give you a quick update on what our plans are for the next year for our vintage Airstream. So let's head over to the garden first. Everything takes me a little longer right now. Oh, cause I am almost halfway through this pregnancy. Getting pretty wiped out pretty fast. Okay. So the garden, so bright. Let me darken things up for you guys. So this is the state of the garden. We have our four large beds here, and then we have expansion of the garden over that way, and hookah culture, as well as some raised beds over there. So in this area behind me right here, we have our berms and swales. The only thing we're changing in the garden over here is we're just going to continue to expand. We're going to continue to add more berms and swales over that way where the roosters are right now, they're gonna work on preparing that area for us. <laughs> and we do have one big change coming to the garden. We are quitting the back to Eden method for annuals. So this bed right behind me is going to become a perennial bed instead of an annual bed. Oh, I need to stay in the shade. Whew. It is getting toasty and honestly holding this tripod is getting to be kind of difficult. Back to Eden just didn't work for us with annuals because our soil is really heavy and it just takes too long to loosen up the soil for quick production of annuals. In addition, our wood chips that we're getting are just too big for Back to Eden with annuals. So instead, we're just going to grow perennials in it. Um, we'll brush aside the wood chips, we'll fill the hole with some nice loose compost just to loosen the soil up a little bit and and plant a few some berries and things like that in there so that's our plan for back to eden we're also making a couple really big changes to the other annual beds so we have three beds behind me so we got this bed two three and those three beds, we're using a mix of methods. We have some wood chips still down, but it's mostly the Ruth Stout method using rotted hay. The rotted hay, for us, our rotted hay actually comes out of our goat pen, so it has manure in it as well. What we're finding is we're having a big issue in the spring with slugs and the Ruth Stout method. What we're going to do is we're gonna convert at least one of the beds to all no dig. We may convert all three of the beds to no dig depending on how things go or potentially two of them. I'm not sure yet. What I do know is we will continue to use Ruth Stout for things like garlic and onions and maybe some other fun stuff like tomatoes and potatoes. They all seem to really love Ruth Stout, but um, not for things that are susceptible to slugs and not for things that were direct sowing like squash and beans, which the slugs ate all of them before they came up, as you may know from our garden tours. This bed, this bed, and this bed are all candidates for being converted into the no dig style. No dig is just putting compost down on top of the native soil and planting in the compost. So while our growth is obviously looking really good, it's just the direct seeded stuff that really got set back, as well as um, my brassicas, although they've all bounced back. In this area over here, we've got our huga culture bed, and behind it, we have this section. Well, we're killing off some grass here, but then we have this open section where Chris actually wants to put a potting shed, a little garden shed. 
So there will be a little garden shed there in front of this pine tree, which has lots of overgrowth, but um, a little potting shed here. So then we'll have a potting shed for our nice large garden. And in the potting shed, we'll be able to store things like garden tools. I have a lot of garden supplies, soil, garden tools. Maybe I could have um, an area where I can start seeds out there. So we'll see, we'll see what's going on with that. So we got our chickens. Everything is pretty much the same there. So this barn, as you can see, we have painted it. We need to add another coat, but we've replaced the roof. We've added solar panels. We've painted it white. The next thing on our list is to put up the doors. Chris has been building double barn doors, put up the dormer window, and then put up windows here. So once we get those things done, the barn is gonna look <laughs> mostly complete. Eventually I'd like to landscape, but I'm not sure if that's in the, the next year or not. Also behind me is this little smaller garden. We've got three raised beds and hardy kiwi growing on the trellis, some pots. So this area we're going to put wood chips down over the entire area around the raised beds. And eventually I'd like to put up a little fence around here and just have like a nice, a nice little garden in front of the barn by the chickens. Actually, one thing I'm thinking about right as I'm talking to you guys is this could be a fenced in flower garden. So we could turn this into a garden where we plant dahlias and zinnias and all kinds of beautiful flowers. So it could be a cut flower garden. That would be really beautiful in front of the barn and around the animals. And I could just put up a little fence and we could continue adding containers and little beds and things like that to really expand the area. So thanks for uh, inspiring me to make this video because now I have an idea. This can be our, our cut flower garden eventually. That sounds really beautiful. Before we head inside to show you guys all the things we're doing for our homestead in the house, I want to point out this area behind me. It's hard, to, it's hard to point when I'm not looking where I'm pointing, but let me show you guys what I mean. Okay, so you can see this area. Well, right here, like around here, we're going to put in a kitchen garden and then we're gonna extend out a little bit and put in a little fire pit and seating area. So soon we'll be working on killing off the grass with some tarps and then we'll be laying down thick, a thick layer of wood chips in this area, beginning to look for reclaimed materials for the, for the raised garden beds for the kitchen garden. So this is gonna be the kitchen garden, um, tall raised beds. I'm gonna plant things like cherry tomatoes and basil, herbs and other small things. So for those who haven't heard of a kitchen garden before, a kitchen garden is similar to how it sounds. It's a garden near your kitchen for things that are commonly used in cooking that you wanna grab really quick. Things like herbs, like basil and thyme, oregano, parsley, all of those yummy things. Um, things that you might use in a fresh salad real quick, like pick from the garden. Oh, I just want to make salad. Go pick some lettuce, go pick some tomatoes. And the goal of a kitchen garden is that it's lovely. It's close to your house and it's really convenient when you're cooking. I am mostly inspired to do a kitchen garden because of just the beauty of it. And I just love growing food wherever we can. I know we have so many gardens and there's just two of us, but if we have too much, we will find a way to, to get the food um, to people who need it. We will find a way to, to store it well. Eventually, I want to have a CSA that for every box that's purchased, a box is donated to a family in need. That's like a, a long-term goal of mine, but expanding our garden space is not a bad thing and it's, it's really not too much um, space especially when you do things like raised beds where it's really easy to weed, it's really easy to maintain them, and um, so easy to plant in them. So it's never a problem to have too many gardens, personally, I don't think. <laughs> so that's gonna be behind me, the kitchen garden. Wood chips down on the ground, raised beds, probably hygge culture style with lots of fresh, nice compost on top, and then I'll plant things that I can easily bring inside. I'm also going to plant some cut flowers in those beds so I can just grab some flowers real quickly when we have 
friends and family over or just to enjoy in the house. Now, I had to come sit down on the patio because one, I wanted to talk about the patio, but two, I'm so exhausted holding up this camera. I can't even explain it. It's like my stamina is 2% of what it normally is. I'm so out of breath. So apparently today is just one of those pregnancy days. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't sleep super well last night, so that could explain it. Um, maybe this is what you get. You get me. <sighs> so right now, our patio, you can kind of tell <laughs> behind me, there are brick pavers and we have a patio rug down and then we have some furniture which i'll show you real quick and we have these two chairs these little tables and then this this couch that i'm sitting on right now we're going to be pulling up all the pavers for the patio and doing a floating deck which maybe doesn't sound um, familiar to you. I've seen pictures of it before. What a floating deck is, is it's essentially a deck that isn't on stilts or, what are, what are decks normally on? Posts? Uh, yeah. It's essentially a deck that's not on posts. It's actually directly on the ground. So you make a frame for it on the ground and then it's gonna be probably like 10 to 12 inches off the ground. And there's a couple reasons for this. One, it reduces your need for materials. It's still that beautiful deck feel. You don't need a railing. Um, you don't need a permit because it's not actually attached to the house. And the other reason is, if you can see our house, it's really close to the outside. There's really only maybe two feet of space between the door um, where you step off and the ground. And so it makes a lot more sense to do a floating deck than it would to raise something off the ground for kind of a silly reason. And we'll just continue to make this space beautiful. We're going to redo that step, put in the deck, and then this area around. Um, we have flower gardens. So we have roses and peony bush. We have hostas, a still bee, Lots of fun flowers and things. And so I'm gonna to continue to add to those gardens, continue to plant, plant new flowers and just really fill this out and make it beautiful. Currently this area has no shade feature. Let me show you what I mean. So the sun, it's peeping over. And once it does, it's just blasts this area. What we're going to do for shade is we're going to string some high tensile wire from the house, put out a couple of posts and do one of those sail shades so it's essentially like fabric that you stretch out over the area and so it's gonna feel kind of like a pergola but it's just fabric it's not it's not a hard covering because we'll be stringing high tensile wire to posts we can also string lights to the post so we can have like lights twinkly lights up over this area at night and i just want it to feel really romantic really whimsical so in this area here, we're going to be doing a very similar thing. While we're not going to be hanging shade, we are going to hang the high tensile wire probably to that tree and then maybe to a post and continue the lights over the future kitchen garden. So that, that way we'll have like the twinkly romantic lights over the patio, over the kitchen garden and eventually we're actually going to be continuing them all the way over the full garden. So that should be beautiful. Maybe not in the next year, but in the next year on our homestead, I do want to do the kitchen garden. I want to get the loading deck done, hopefully next year, like by end of 2021. So year and a half. Well, I'm going to take a like 10 minute break and just snooze away out here and then I will take you guys inside to show you guys what we're doing there and fi finish off with the airstream. Well I fell asleep for about 20 minutes. I don't really know how long but I woke up to the sun beating down on me. It is time to go inside. Let me show you guys what we're doing in there. I'm excited. It's a lot. It's busy. It's a little chaotic. 
before we go inside. I do wanna be honest, our house is a total mess because we're doing a lot of renovations. When you do renovations, it's a mess. I'm just gonna be real and show you guys how crazy it is because, because I think life is all about the imperfections. So let's go in. So here we are, we've got our kitchen, dining room. I've not cleaned in a while, so it's just, this is just what it's like. And then we've got our living room in here and that's pretty much staying the same. But, but behind me, got all these boxes and that. So what is that? Well, we are replacing almost all the floors in our upstairs, the all the bedrooms and the hallway and the staircase with laminate flooring. Even though we are probably not going to get to it all this summer, we wanted to buy all of the material now so that we have it in case they discontinue the line or or it changes over the course of the next year. So we bought all of the flooring for the upstairs. So we're starting to replace the flooring first in our master bedroom, which will also be baby's room for the first year. So let me just show you guys, because it looks a little crazy. So let's take a peek behind this door. Let me just show you our bedroom. It's crazy messy. So normally, <laughs> we don't have this big sheet here, and our bedroom extends that way quite a bit. Everything to the left of this sheet is actually going to be the baby's nursery. So let me take you back there. Okay, so this area, this was our, our closet, and then there's this whole little cove. We decided we're going to be relocating the closet to this section, and everything from there over will be the baby's nursery. So the baby's crib will go in there, dresser, maybe a little rocking chair. I have not decided what the layout of the room is going to be, or really plan that out yet because first we need to get that wall fully taken down, re reframe the new closet, paint, put new flooring in, and then I can get to work on the baby's nursery, which I'll probably be able to get to in late July, I imagine this part, getting the, the room ready will take about a month and then I can actually start to decorate and set up the crib and, and do stuff like that. So we're not gonna be one of those people um, that have the nursery ready at 20 weeks because I'll be 20 weeks next week and I'm guessing it's gonna be another 10 weeks before the nursery is ready, which is fine. We don't, we don't have to have it ready, you know, months before the baby comes. When you have a renovation in one room, you have a renovation in your whole house. This is the donation pile closet doors, just a lot, just a big mess. So after showing you guys the bedroom, I found Chris in the guest room just hanging out and then we ended up taking like a two hour nap because we were both super tired. And then I went and ran a bunch of errands, but I have one more thing in the house that I wanted to show you that we're gonna be working on over the next few months. So this room right here, is the laundry room. We actually just replaced our washer and dryer so that they would both be front loading so we can put butcher block counter on top of them. And we're replacing our sink. We're gonna put up a backsplash using leftover materials from our kitchen remodel, put up shelving, and just make this a really nice space. One of the reasons it's so important to me is because we are going to be cloth diapering our little babe as much as possible. And I just really want a nice space to, to be in with all those cloth diapers. Um, I don't do a lot of laundry. Chris actually does most of the laundry right now, but that's going to change as we have a baby and we have more laundry to do. I'm obviously going to be pitching in and we'll be taking it 50-50. So it's time for a refreshed laundry room with better use of the space. Those are all the projects in the house. The last thing, real quick, we'll go right back outside and I'll give you an update on the Airstream. this 1969 Airstream behind me we've had for I think nine months and we haven't really done anything but that's because we decided we had some other projects we needed to work on first in the house so with baby on the way the house took priority and the Airstream 
has taken a little bit of a back seat, which is okay. Um, it's obviously 50 years old. It can handle a couple years of waiting to be completely renovated. But we do plan to start it in the next year. Likely, I would say in the spring, slowly but surely, over the course of two to three years, we're hoping to finish it, turn it into a little tiny house and be able to rent it out um, and take trips in it and maybe one day live in it, who knows? Well, my beautiful friends, that is an update on all of the plans that we have over the next year. As of now, I'm sure things will come up with a baby on the way and who knows what else will, will come our way over the next year. Life is unpredictable and you can only plan so much. So I'm sure we'll, we'll go with the ebbs and flows and things will change and we'll keep you posted along the way. But I wanted to let you in a little bit into our plans, into my dreams and, and the things that we have going on here. I have a big surprise in the garden that I'm really looking forward to showing you in Monday's garden tour. And I love you guys and I'll see you soon. The sun is always shining right.